Lord Provost, ladies and gentlemen, Minister, um, welcome to Aberdeen. I can add my welcome to Aberdeen and to All Energy. I would like to start off maybe a quick reference to Angela. Her credentials for being Scottish was beginning to sound a bit like Donald Trump. So I was a bit concerned at the beginning of her excellent presentation. <laughs> Um, but I would like to really seriously start by thanking uh, Judith Patton, who's put in a tremendous amount of energy herself in the last 14 years to make all energy the success that it is today. <laughs> in 1999, when I, was, when I asked Jeremy Creswell, a well-known local journalist here, to lead one of six groups looking at how we diversify the economy in Aberdeen, um, little did I think that we'd, have a, we'd be in a position where we have uh, not only the Aberdeen Renewable Energy Group and the European Offshore Wind Deployment Centre still to be built, but also this fantastic uh, exhibition and conference. So Glasgow will be thankful to Aberdeen once again. But on to positive things, hydrogen buses. Um, they're there, as we, the chairman has said. Two of them are outside for you to see that it's a reality and they will be fully deployed by the end of the year. And today I want to speak about hydrogen and the, the hydrogen project a little bit more. I think, you know, Aberdeen has real ambitions in terms of economic development and diversifying the energy industry. But there are also issues in Aberdeen in relation to air quality, as is common with many cities around the world. And the move to hydrogen is very important for us to address some of those air quality issues. Aberdeen, of course, is known across the world as an energy knowledge centre, and hydrogen and fuel cell technologies provide a great opportunity to build the region's energy knowledge and expertise. Our objectives in using hydrogen and fuel cell technology are to maximise the region's renewable energy capacity through the production of renewable hydrogen for transport and energy applications. And also to apply transferable oil and gas skills into the hydrogen economy, which is also attracting new faces to this fast-growing industry from the local area and indeed from far beyond. To reduce pollution levels and enable compliance with national air quality, in particular with the city centre air quality management areas, and assist in reducing carbon emissions by 42% in line with the Climate Change Act. In front of you, you see some quotes from some influential people. I'll pick out one or two. Um, Steve Yang, the chief executive officer of Hyundai, who we're working very closely with and have had their own cars here over the past years. Our ultimate goal is to build fuel cell vehicles and make them available for 2015. I visited their development plant uh, outside Seoul uh, at the end of last year, and they indeed are well on their way to reaching that aspiration. And then there's the Toyota Motor Group. Vehicles powered by hydrogen fuel cells are more likely to be viable by 2020 than battery electric cars. So hydrogen as an energy fuel source is not a new technology, but has seen real changes in its use over the last 10 years in response to the need to reduce carbon emissions and, to increase, in new, and increase renewable energy. Ever increasing development of hydrogen fuel cells uses within the transport sector in particular um, with strong markets now developing in Germany, Japan, Korea, and the US. Large car manufacturers such as Hyundai, Toyota, and Honda are moving into commercial production of fuel cell electric vehicles, and we've had discussions with all of them in the past year in Japan and Korea. And of course, it leads to challenges associated with hydrogen production, storage, and refueling industry. This is, a, as is the last slide, is from the McKinsey report, and it basically shows how the industry is developing in terms of uh, applications coming up to 2020. And we, across the, the world, and particularly in the US, we do see large amounts of forklift trucks being uh, employed, hydrogen forklift trucks. And of course, in other parts of the world, in particular um, in, in rural Russia, uh, that hydrogen fuel cells being used as a backup fuel source already. So the, it's very much, and this move forward to the commercialization uh, by 2020 is very much supported by the McKinsey report, which came out last year. Uh, the McKinsey report was developed, developed by the Fuel Cell and Hydrogen Joint Undertaking, which is a, a EU commission body, which we work very closely with and have done on the hydrogen buses. And the report demonstrates that the commercialization of vehicles, such as car, buses, and light vehicles, are expected to occur in the next three to five years. 
course, this raises issues and constraints in the hydrogen infrastructure to support this development. That's one of the challenges we have here in the city. In particular, the development of refueling infrastructure links to renewable energy and hydrogen reduction, as well as the potential use of hydrogen as a byproduct from industrial process. But it's really the, pro the, the Aberdeen Hydrogen Bus Project itself I want to tell you about today. The Aberdeen Hydrogen Bus Project aims to address the technical challenges. And it is a project, it's a research project that, that involves the deployment of real buses. It's to integrate hydrogen and fuel into low carbon transport solutions with, within Aberdeen and more broadly across Scotland. It's to test the ability of hydrogen fuel cell vehicles to support battery electric vehicles as a technology to reduce carbon emissions for the transport sector. The bus, the bus project aims to create demand for hydrogen, 160 to 200 kilograms a day, which can allow other technologies and solutions to be tested, such as balancing supply and demand of wind energy. And of course, the ultimate gain, ultimate uh, endpoint we're looking for here is the production of green hydrogen. We start off with, with brown hydrogen, but our ultimate aim in terms of this project is to produce green hydrogen and use that in the buses. The Aberdeen Hydrogen Bus Project consists of two European funded projects, High Low, Viso High Low, High Velo City and High Transit. In total, this has secured 10 million euros funding, which allows Aberdeen to invest in hydrogen infrastructure in buses. And the buses, I'm delighted to say, will be operated by first bus and stagecoach. Um, first, of course, of their world headquarters in Aberdeen and stagecoach in Scotland. There have been a number of other hydrogen bus projects, London, Oslo, Amsterdam and Cologne, for example, in Europe. And this will be the first hydrogen bus deployment in Scotland. When completed, the Aberdeen Hydrogen Bus Project will have the largest hydrogen bus fleet in Europe and indeed, I believe, the world. The project will also provide the largest refueling station of its type in the UK in the centre of Aberdeen. And we will have an integrated maintenance facility for hydrogen vehicles within a working council depot. We hope to demonstrate that FCE buses and commercial routes within Aberdeen City and indeed into Aberdeenshire and in comparison to conventional uh, diesel hybrid buses, all the tests so far are very, very positive. There are a range of uh, public and private sector partners involved to realise the bus project. Aberdeen is delighted to have such experts and market leaders in the field involved in the projects. Uh, in the project, and you can see some of the partners listed there. Uh, and of course, there are others as well, people like Ballard Fuel Cells and, and Hydrogenics, two Canadian companies who have played a, an integral role in the work that we've got to, the stage we've got to today. So to the buses themselves, the bus that is going to be used is the fourth generation Van Hool bus, a fantastic Belgian company. Um, and the bus has the same performance characteristics as a diesel vehicle. It's been the fuel cell that's been used has been extensively tested in, the, the, in Whistler, in British Columbia, um, where it's been used to go up the, up the steep hills to the various ski resorts in, in, in that area. It will be a class one EU certified city bus, and the bus is essentially a hybrid electric vehicle that uses hydrogen to provide electricity through a 150 kilowatt fuel cell. Hydrogen is stored on the bus on the roof, involving 10 hydrogen tanks, which provides a range of 220 to 260 miles per day. And it produces, of course, zero emissions. The um, refueling station will be provided by BOC. And uh, I was delighted last night when Nick told me that everything had been refueled yesterday to get the buses in here today. Um, so and I'm glad they've made it. BOC are part of the, 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 the massive Lindy Group and uh, the station itself will be situated in the centre of the City Aberdeen City Council's Kitty Brewster Depot. Hydrogen will be generated on site by three electrolyzers, which are capable of producing 400 kilograms of hydrogen a day. The station is capable of dispensing 300 kilo kilograms of a day and has an on site storage of 420 kilos. The station is designed to meet the demands of the buses, which will be, be, be between 20 and 30 kilograms of hydrogen per bus. The Aberdeen Hydrogen Project shows the, concept, shows the concepts we have for the possibilities of hydrogen production, storage and use, and sets the template for future expansion of hydrogen infrastructure in the UK. 
The bus project forms a key demonstration project within the H2 Aberdeen initiative that promotes the strategic hydrogen framework for Aberdeen, which identifies the concept for the future use of hydrogen within the Aberdeen city region. And the strategic framework focuses on developing and supporting future hydrogen infrastructure, including a second refueling station within the city, seek the production of hydrogen using renewable sources, seek to maintain and develop private and public sector partnerships for further demonstration projects in line with the FCHJU European priorities, support the development of a local supply chain, which is very important, and the promotion and development to support hydrogen and fuel cell technology within Scottish, UK and EU transport and energy policy. With the ultimate aim for Aberdeen to be the EU, EU centre of excellence for hydrogen technologies and demonstration projects. The Aberdeen Hydrogen Economy for Aberdeen City Region Strategy uh, document. Um, we, this, it's just getting across that we have a strategy for the broader hydrogen side of things, and Judith's given me the nod that I need to wrap up, so I will just tell you we have that strategy in place. It's been reviewed this year. It was launched here by Ed Davey last year. Finally, um, a couple of announcements. We are currently working with an English company to establish a partnership to deploy vertical access wind turbines in the city centre with a view to the production of hydrogen quietly and safely in city centres. And we are also in discussions with a major international development ag agency to establish an international renewable centre here in the city, incorporate, incorporating a global centre of excellence for hydrogen technology. So there's a lot happening in Aberdeen, and today I can announce that um, next year we will be launching the AREG Renewable Energy Conference and Exhibition here in Aberdeen. Thank you very much. <laughs>